Hello everyone. In today's video, I'll show you how to easily create a cinema graph in Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So how do they work? A cinema graph is two things. You take a video of a moving subject, then you take a photo or screen grab of the moving subject and you lay it on top of that video. So now we just have a flat image. Then we cut out a hole in that image for the area that we still want to see moving. So one area of the cinema graph is moving while the rest of it is completely frozen. Second, it's a never ending loop. So the video part of the cinema graph actually loops into itself. So to shoot your cinema graph, you're going to want to shoot with a tripod. And if you're going to shoot for Instagram, you might want to shoot in the vertical mode here. So very important to have a stable camera. If you don't have a tripod, something to keep it steady. And of course, if you do shoot horizontally, you could still crop, but chances are it is going to come out better if you shoot vertically or you're shooting intentionally, say for Instagram. If you're not going to shoot for Instagram, go ahead and shoot horizontally and crop accordingly. We're going to start off in Photoshop. If you have some other photo editing software and you don't have Premiere Pro, what you might want to do is edit that video as far as colors and brightness before you bring it into Photoshop. If you can't, you can still do it in Photoshop. You can use adjustment layers in Photoshop for video, just like you can for photo editing. So I've opened my video in Photoshop. It created a layer here on the layers panel. And also notice you have a timeline down here. As soon as you open up a video here in Photoshop, you should see that timeline. If you don't, you come up here to window where it says timeline, you can check that. So down here on this timeline, you can scrub through a video like you can on other video editing programs. And if you come over here to this gear, you have a resolution. Mine is at 25%. You can go up to 50 or 100%. What this resolution is for is it will help in your playback. Say if you have a computer that's not fast or you have a big file, if you could drop the resolution, then you can have your playback run a little bit smoother. You want to make sure that loop playback is checked while we're working on this. This is also a good time to crop your video. So let's say I want to shoot this for Instagram say on the Instagram feed, even though I didn't shoot this vertical, but if I come up here and do a crop, and if I put this 1080 by 1350 up here at the top, this will set up my crop for the Instagram feed. So all I need to do is click my check mark, and there it is. So in this case, the crop worked out. Full video in there that I want to work with. But now we need to find an in point and an out point in our video clip. And you can scrub through with the playhead or you can press spacebar to play. But I want to find a place where the coffee is going into the cup and the stream of coffee is constant with not much movement, also not much movement of my hand. And so I'm going to try and scrub to that spot, say somewhere starting right there. And I'm going to come over here to the left hand side to the beginning of the clip. And you see how the cursor turned to a left and right black arrow. And I'm going to drag all the way over to where the playhead is. This will be my end point. And I'm going to let that play a little bit. And I think right there will be my end point. So I'll come to the right hand side of the clip. There is my arrows. And I'm going to drag the clip over to my playhead. And down here at the bottom, you can zoom in more. Just drag this little arrow here. And I can make my clip a little bit bigger. So we have our end point and our out point. So now we need to make the first frame of the clip be the same as the last frame of the clip. This will help to make a seamless and smooth infinite loop. So to do this, we need to duplicate this clip. So I'm gonna come over here to the layers panel, click on this video group here and hit command J. And so now to make the first frame the same as the last frame, we take this bottom clip and drag it all the way over to where it meets the end of the first clip it is right here at the start of the bottom clip. And you can use this arrow down here to zoom in to get it more precise. Now to help create that perfect loop, we're going to take the bottom layer here and extend it over here a little bit more, something like that. And now I want to come down here to this bottom layer, grab the end of it and make it the same length here as the top layer. Now we want to make the top layer fade out, which will reveal the bottom layer below. To do that, we're going to use keyframes. I'm going to start with the top layer selected and come over here to where it says video group one and hit this arrow. And here is opacity, but I need to move my playhead to where 
the layer below starts. I'm going to click on the opacity stopwatch right here. And there's our first keyframe. I'm going to slide the playhead over just a little bit. And I'm going to hit this diamond right here next to opacity. And it's going to add another keyframe. Then I'm going to come over here to the layers panel. And with this layer selected right here on the top, I'm going to bring my opacity down to zero. And last thing I'm going to do with these keyframes is I'm going to move this keyframe all the way over to the end. So what we've done here is as the video plays and it gets to this first keyframe right here, the opacity of the layer above is at 100. As it keeps on moving through, the opacity goes down, down, down until it comes to the end and the opacity is zero and it is revealing the layer below. So this is where we're creating our infinite loop. So now if I press the space bar to hit play, you can see that there's some movement and of course some lagging here because uh, I don't have a fast computer. We're going to do something to stop all that movement. So we're going to take a snapshot of all the layers below and we're going to do that with a stamp visible layer. So if I hit shift option command E, there is my stamp visible layer above all my other video layers. If I hit space bar again, you don't see any movement. And I'm going to make this stamp visible layer the same length as all my other layers. Now we have to punch a hole in this stamp visible layer so that we can see the moving coffee coming into the cup. And we're going to do that with the layer mask. So I'm going to come down here to the layers panel and hit the new layer mask icon. I'm going to select that layer mask. Over here on the left, I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is black and hit B for the brush tool because we're going to paint black on our white layer mask to reveal our areas that we want moving, which is the stream of coffee coming out of the coffee pot. And you can zoom in a little bit and just paint. And if you hit the backslash key right below the delete key, you can actually see where you were painting and you can use your left and right brackets on your keyboard to make your brush bigger or smaller. Of course, if you make a mistake, you can hit the X key, which turns your swatch color, or your foreground color to white, and you can paint away any of the areas that you got too much, but hit X again, and it is painting with black and revealing your liquid coming out of the coffee pot. And if I hit backslash again, that goes away. And if I hit my space bar, you can see where I still need to paint further into the cup and I'll make all my modifications here and I'll keep on painting until I see that I've included the whole path of the coffee coming into the cup in space bar again. And there we have our cinemagraph. Not too bad. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that. Don't worry. Once you go over these steps a few times, you'll be able to do this easily and make your own cinemagraphs. But now the last thing we're going to do is export it. But before we export it, there's some tips I have for you. So if you didn't have a chance to color grade or make any kind of adjustments to this clip before you brought it into Photoshop, you can still come down here to the layers panel and say, for instance, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, bring up the saturation of the clip. You can also crop your clip right here. If you didn't get a chance to do it when you first open it up, something to keep in mind for Instagram, if it's a video, it is a minimum of three seconds. So a lot of times you make a cinema graph and it's only a couple seconds. You may need to bring this into a, another video editing program and duplicate the clip to make it go over three seconds or however long you want to make it. And the last thing is this clip has some audio in it and it's the liquid pouring into the cup. You may not want the audio in your video. In fact, for a cinema graph, it's probably going to be better if you don't have audio unless it's synced perfectly. But here in the timeline panel here, there's an icon right here. And once I click that, that's no longer selected. And I hit the space bar and the audio is gone. So you might want to mute the audio before you export it. So now let's export our video. Two ways from Photoshop that we're going to export this and I'll show you quickly. So if I come up here to file, export, render video, and we're going to name our file and I'm going to put this to what it is cropped to. It's 
by 1350. And I'm going to leave the frame rate the same. And all you need to say is render. And that will put your video on your hard drive. And what you want to use the video for is, say if you're posting this to Instagram, you would make a video out of it and post it that way. Next, we're going to create a GIF. And that you can use for websites or any other platform that accepts GIFs and runs them. And here's the video playing here. It's four seconds. And now if I want to make a GIF, I would come up here to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And all you need to do is come up here at the top, make sure that GIF is selected and your image size is what you want. And looping options, make sure it says forever. And now all you have to do is save it. And if I come to where it is saved on my desktop, select it and just hit space bar. And there's my GIF. If you're getting value out of this so far, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Let's do this in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna start off with this video clip and it is a 4K clip. And I know I want to post this on the Instagram feed. So I've created a custom sequence. So I'll come up here to file, new sequence. And I'm gonna come down here to my custom sequence. And it is Instagram full screen, 1080 by 1350. And I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm going to take my clip and drop it on a timeline. And I'm going to say keep existing settings. And I can see I need to scale this down. And I'm going to come up to my effects controls. And come to scale. And just bring this down so that it fits. Another thing I want to do is remove the audio. Because I don't want no audio in my cinemagraph. I'm going to right click on my audio. And say unlink. Then select my audio again and delete it. So now I want to duplicate my clip. I can hold down Alt and drag up, and my clip is duplicated. We need to look for an in point and an out point. I'm looking for an in point where my video is looking steady. I'm focusing on my stream of coffee coming out of the coffee pot. I'm just trying to look through here, scrub through, and see where that might be. Like I might want to start it right there. And I'm going to take both my clips and I am going to trim them to the playhead. And I'm going to bring them both over to the start of the timeline. Now I want to look for the out point where I've stopped pouring my coffee. Somewhere around here, it looks pretty steady. Make my timeline a little bigger here so we can see. And now I'm going to drag my top track all the way over to where the playhead is, right there. So the reason I just did that was because I want a loop. And a loop is actually going to start at the beginning of the timeline and it's going to end right here where that clip got moved over to. So now I want to cut my video here on the lower track and hit C and I'm going to cut it right there and I'm going to delete the rest of it behind that. So now I'm going to take this top layer here and I'm going to drag it back a little bit something like that. You can see if I play it we still have a little bit of movement we got to get rid of but we're starting to see our loop get started here. So now we need to apply an effect. So in your effects panel you can come over here to video transitions, dissolve and cross dissolve or you can just search for cross dissolve up here in the search box. I'm going to drag a cross dissolve onto my top track. I am going to adjust it so that it is a little bit shorter on that top track. So now you see that a little bit better. It's a little bit shorter. And so now it's just going to fade into the other video. You can see that fade right there. It's not too noticeable, but you can see the fade. So now we're starting to get a loopable video. So now this is where our loop is going to end. So I'm going to hit C and I'm going to cut off the rest of the clip there and delete it and play it back and you can see a little bit of a dissolve there. So now we're going to take our layer down here, the bottom layer. Now we're going to duplicate this layer, hit Alt and drag this up. And now we're going to scrub through here and see how we're looking. And we're going to drag it to a point where we like it. And with that top layer selected, I'm going to right click and go to where it says frame hold options. And we're going to change this to playhead and say OK. So now if we play this back, we have a still frame nothing is moving so we need to mask out that area of the coffee you go up here to your effects controls and where it says opacity click on the pen tool and you can mask out here and you can move your mask if you need to also you can come over here to your mask feathering and increase this a little bit i'm going to make it 
20. Make sure you click inverted. And now when I play back the clip, I have my cinegraph. And now we need to export our clip. Mark my in and out points. I'm going to hit command M. I'm going to rename this and save it. All I have to do is match source high bitrate. I am not going to be exporting audio, so I don't need to check that. I know that my width and height is 1080 by 1350. I'm going to keep the frame rate the same and I can just export it. So this is video and I can see that it is four seconds and I can post this directly to the Instagram feed as it is. I know that it'll play well on the Instagram feed because the video requirements is three to 60 seconds. And if you need to make a GIF, just hit Command M and come up here to your format and select Animated GIF. Everything is the same here. This preset Animated GIF Match Source. And you can rename this something else. And you don't need to change anything else. Just export it. Here's the video playing. And for a GIF, just select it on Mac. Hit spacebar. And there's our GIF. If you want to know more about Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro, Click or tap on one of the videos on the screen now. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, and share this video. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.